It's the place where dreams become a reality, where they will be pushed to the limits. Exhilaration. Oh, wow. Heartbreak. Supremacy. The Canadian National Figure Skating Championships have it all, and it's going to be electric. Cause you'll just find going hypnotizing, head down to your toe, where your hands going down your back, watch that body go, it's electric, 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 electric. Very nice. It's so electric, electric, electric. Yes. Oh yes, that was a good one. Star is born. And a good crowd on hand tonight as we are back live at the Coliseum in Moncton, New Brunswick for our coverage of the Canadian Figure Skating Championships. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome back to CTV and TSN's coverage of the National Championships. You are in for a treat this evening. We have the free programs in both the pairs and the dance. The great story in the pairs, the top three teams are in a virtual first place tie. In the pairs, no surprise, Virtue and Moyer, the Olympic champions are leading, but it is close over Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poge. Now, we'll begin with the pairs. Between the pairs and the dance, Brian Orser, who won a gold medal here in 1985, will join me here. We'll talk about his skater, Cynthia Fanouf, who was dethroned as the women's champion here this afternoon, finishing second to Emily Lacoste. But I want to get Brian's impressions of one of the great men's short programs of all time. A tremendous effort today by Patrick Chan. He scored 101.33 points. Brian Orser will look at it and will replay Chan's short program. Just a reminder, the men's free program, the long program for the men goes tomorrow afternoon. We'll have it at 3.30 Eastern, 4.30 here in the Maritimes. That is 12.30 on the West Coast, and it will be on TSN tonight. We're on CTV, and right now, let's head to the other side of the arena as we say good evening. There they are, Rod Black and Tracy Wilson. Hi, Rod. Hi, Brian. Good evening, everybody. It has been a fantastic day here in Moncton. In so many ways, it's going to get better tonight. I'm not sure if the pairs needed a short program to decide anything, because <laughs> well, guess what? Help. <laughs> We're right at the starting gate again. It's a dead heat. Uh, no question. I mean, what's it going to come down to tonight? It could be a hair out of place. Um, these skaters are virtually tied on the scorecard, but also if you look at their plan on paper, a virtual tie, it's like a minefield of hidden difficulties that these pair of skaters have to get through. And what the winner's going to have to do is get through with the least amount of mistakes, with the most quality marks. The, le the winner at the end of tonight is going to be the one that goes out after the win that just goes all out for it and doesn't put a foot wrong. It's uh, it's going to be so much fun to watch. Four teams separated by 2.37 points. 66 100 separating the top three. First out of the gate will be Paige Lawrence and Rudy Swiggers from Saskatchewan when we come back. Welcome back live. It is electric here tonight. Pairs free skate, final four teams, final flight for the gold medal. All so close right now. The eight other pairs teams skated earlier today, and this is the score that is up there right now. Steele and Schultz 
144.33. Expect that to be usurped here tonight, however, by these four teams. It will be a battle for gold. It will be a battle for positioning on the podium. And there are two placements to the world championships in these France. And every one of these teams is uh, capable of really serving the country well at the world championships. All strong teams. Uh, each with something unique to offer. This is what you want. This is what you want and rivalries here now. This is a team from Saskatchewan. Paige Lawrence and Rudy Sweekers. And this team is all about personality. And her dad uh, owns a rodeo. He's a bull rider. And, you know, she is her father's daughter. She just loves excitement. She loves the, the danger, loves to be thrown. They'll skate first. Skating last will be Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford. DeHamel and Radford are the leaders by just 0.27 right now. 0.27 over Jessica Dubé and Sebastian Wolf. But DeHamel and Radford yesterday would have been leading by a lot more if it wasn't for a lift that went astray. Still, when we talked to them yesterday, they feel they have the goods tonight to put them over the top. I didn't think we would all have 60, but uh, and it's unfortunate for us because that one little mistake cost us five points. So going into the long program, you know, we could have had a little bit more of a cushion, but uh, it's going to force all of us to skate for it tomorrow and it's going to be really exciting. We're the only team doing the triple lutz and we do it in combination with two double toes. It's worth over eight points if we do it uh, as well as we can and we can make up ground by doing that combination as well as receiving over seven points for a triple twist. We're confident that if we do our job, the result will follow. So we're just going to focus on doing our job. All about the points tonight. And they talked about the mistake in the short program, costing them five points. That's because they did not get credit for that lift. It was deemed that they took two cracks at it, not allowed. There are the defending champions, Kirsten Moore Towers, Dylan Moskovich. Feel the drama building tonight. The pairs free is next. Live from Moncton on CTV tonight, four teams remain for the gold medal, the Canadian Championship. Lawrence Swiggers first, Moore Towers Moskovich second, Dubé and Wolf, new team this year, third, then Duhamel and Radford. And maybe it may come down to who controls their nerves the most here tonight and also do not discount the importance of the side-by-side -side triple jumps. Everything is going to come into play, and it's a fine line. You know, some skaters, when it's that close, they, they try not to lose, and you can't have that attitude. You just have to go all out for the win. Paige and Rudy will skate to music for from D'Artagnan and Man in the Iron Mask, choreographed by Mark Pillay. Great music here building as they enter their triple twist. Nice start. Rod, you talked about the solo jumps. Triple toes coming here. Very nice. That's what they missed in the short program. It has them in fourth. Look at this backward entrance. Very difficult, a blind entrance into that lift. Side by side double axles. First one's excellent. Slight two foot landing by Rudy on the second.
this team from the province of Saskatchewan. Age is 21, Rudy is 24. They train in Vernon, Manitoba, but also spend a lot of time down in Florida with former Pairs champion Lyndon Johnson. Entrance that plays well to the music and the mood, the death spiral. Tell you they're at the halfway mark. They just passed it. All the throws and lifts and triple jumps get an extra 10% bonus. The hidden difficulty of doing it when you're tired. Oh, big mistake fall out of a lift, a very difficult lift, one arm. Again, the fatigue coming into play there. Throw coming up. Oh, that was superb. Throw triple lots. Oh, and a little bobble there again from Paige. Stayed on her feet though. 30 seconds to go. You can see they're really fighting to keep this lift up. First out of the gate tonight, and they got off to a great start. Halfway through, though, ran out of gas. Paige Lawrence, Rudy Swiggers will have their scores, and then the defending champions of Canada next. Big shout out to the skating fans in Saskatchewan. Well, they got off to a terrific start. Let's look at their side-by-side -side triple toes. And these are the jumps they struggled with, as I said, in the short program. Very, very strong element there. It looked to me like fatigue just became a factor at the end of the program. You look how he lifts her up one arm as they went to do the changeover, slightly off balance. Paige ended up behind Rudy and he couldn't hold her up. And then they had to gather themselves, gain the speed to get into their next risk move, the very difficult triple Lutz. That was textbook perfect. I love Paige's air position. And you know, a lot of that, with that fatigue, that's not a lack of training so much with Alex these two Tyler. as adrenaline. Yeah. You go out there, you give it that little bit extra, you're excited because you're skating well. That's why the psychological game is in here tonight and who skates first and controlling your nerves and the adrenaline. Now the pressure on Kirsten Moore Towers and Dylan Moscovich may be a little opening here. Should they lay it down clean, put pressure on the rest behind? It's very interesting, such a close race before the beginning of tonight, but Lawrence and Sweekers, for half a program, did everything possible to grab this title. The second half was the issue. So the total score to beat right now, 144.33, and they are in first place, but now they watch. Here is the team. The climb to the top of the podium a year ago. Back and forth, Moore Towers and Moscovich and DeHamel and Radford all season. This team finished eighth at the Worlds behind DeHamel and Radford. 
who will skate last. And now Kirsten Moore Towers and Dylan Moscovich with their free skate and put the pressure on everybody else and try to make it two pairs championships in a row. Their music, Henry V. with their triple jump, side-by-side -side, triple toes. Oh. oh, and down she goes. And because of that, they were due to do a second series of triple jumps. They had to leave that out. Cows coming here. Shaky again. But good fight by Kirsten. That's a very difficult element for her. She got the most out of it that she could. Comes the throw, throw triple loop. Yes. Defending Canadian champions. However, we have to remember Kirsten is only in her third season as a pair skater. Dylan. Uh, Dylan is very experienced. He will help her through this, talk to her a little bit, relax, Kirsten. He's exactly the partner you want to have in a situation like this one. Triple South Cow, and that was beautiful. are going to be an issue. Well, when it's this close and they know you can't put a foot wrong, that's exactly what happens. Watch this lift. He is as strong as an ox. 
down from his knees, up into the air at the very end of their performance. Especially after the tumble earlier. But, and it is a big one. That is not escaped. That the defending Canadian champions That's okay. envisioned at all. Who would have thought that would have happened? And yesterday we talked about the unexpected and already tonight we're seeing the unexpected here. Well, and what is to be respected is the difficulty of this pair's competition. Jessica Dubé, who used to skate with Bryce Davison with her new partner this season, Sebastian Wolf. They're on the ice. And Kirsten Moore Towers and Dylan Moscovich, I am sure, cannot believe how they have fallen here tonight. That was such a tough performance, but watch how they opened with the side-by-side -side triple toes right on. And you could see Kirsten look at Dylan and then turn to go forward into the next set of triples and just hit her toe pick. And I think that was just her being really energetic and, and aggressive and trying a little too hard. Now watch coming out of this lift, what happened here. And she's just back and they both come down and that's just a situation where the timing went off, but unfortunately they'll lose two points. Now watch Dylan here at the very end of this program. Like I said, the strength is uh, unbelievable. What a beautiful lifter and a, and a gorgeous lift. Yeah. I have to say, I, I really liked the way Dylan helped Kirsten through that. As I said earlier, she is very young. She's new that, to guys. the big game of, uh, of pair skating in her third year. Alongside former pairs champions, Christy and Chris Wirtz. <laughs> and and it loves I you. <laughs> love that comment because it tells you everything you need yeah. to know about being yeah. at the Nationals. And some days you can hit it out of the park, yes. and some days you swing and miss. That's right. And that's what makes it a terrific sport. Good perspective, Kirsten Moore Towers. Good perspective. Here are their marks. Lawrence and Swigger's mark, 168.84. And it's not going to be enough for Moore Towers and Moscovich, so definitely they are not going to be in the running to retain their national championship. Now they have to see if they are going to make it to the podium. MTM, Moore Towers Moscovich have fallen into second. Two teams to come. Jessica Dubé and Sebastian Wolf, this is your time. They had one of the best short programs yesterday, and you have to give a lot of credit to Sebastian Wolf, considering he was a junior pair skater up until recently, got the call from Jessica Dubé former Canadian champion and she has helped him through all of this and certainly one of the most improved teams over the last year. Oh no question Sebastian coming into the international season never having competed internationally junior or senior we saw what they're capable of in the short. Selections from Philip Glass choreographed by David Wilson. Good speed, new element, triple twist. Not an entirely clean catch on the landing of that element. Jessica doubled. Even if one partner does a triple, if one does a double, it goes to the lowest common denominator.
they need these side-by-side -side double axles. And the second set, back in the game. Jessica's voice calling out so they can keep the spins in sync. Touchdown with the free foot on the landing. We have seen that the lifts have been a factor in this competition at the end of the program. It's been a factor for these two in competition this year. Two more lifts. here, really digging deep, trying to get the speed to get this lift up. And they are hanging on a beautiful position in the air by Jessica, her experience showing. A year ago, Jessica Dubé was skating singles at the Nationals. Her partner, Bryce Davison, had to have surgery. His career cut short. Sebastian Wolf was watching the National Championships. This year, they have a chance to win a National Championship together. Well, they have struggled early on in the season, but they have saved their best for Nationals. And the last team to skate next. A year ago, Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford finished second at the national championships. They are four and a half minutes away from finishing first, but it has been a night where no one has gone clean. You have to kind of count up the misses and mistakes here tonight, but you also have to give credit to command of the ice, and this team had command of their performance. Coach Annie Barabe, Sophie Richard, let's take a look here at the side-by-side -side triples. Watch Jessica. Hers was a double. And so not picking up very many points for that element, so they needed these double axles. 
with a mazurka, so a series of double axles there and hanging on. So not the major errors in this program. Some really nice moments. Boy, a little touch down there, but beautiful air position. This, however, was the cleanest team of the teams we've seen so far, and they should, they should move into first well, place. Well, it'll depend about the hidden difficulties of the other teams. Oh, Dude, this is wolf. great. This is really good for them. 171. Yes. 6-0, Dubé and Wolf are currently in first place. <laughs> Jessica Dubé, Sebastian Wolf. Now the they have to watch this team. Please welcome Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford. Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford were near perfect yesterday, except for a lift later in the program. Now they sit on the edge of winning their first national pairs championship. Team that finished seventh at the Worlds. And they will skate to selections from cold play. they get on their triple twist. She looks up to the rafters and then goes there. Very difficult jumps coming up here. Gotham. Beautiful combination. Triple Lutz different for sing difficult for single skaters. No other pair skaters do them as well as these two in the world. Oh, they're bang on here. The response their side-by-side -side spins get from the audience usually not a huge feature for them it is choreography by Julie Marcotte the halfway mark now.
program. Throw triple flip. Hanging on. It's over. 30 seconds. And they got their lift today at the end. How about this? Hang on, guys, one more spin. Last team to skate. Last was best. Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford. You're going to get your scores, but I'll tell you what, you don't even need them. You're the new Canadian pairs champions. That performance was breathtaking. A nice birthday present for their coach, Richard Gauthier, who turns 50 tomorrow. Happy birthday. Congratulations to the new champions. Mom, Dad, Melina, oh Jeff, God. Claire, everybody, everybody. Normal, There's the quote of the week. Better than anything I ever dreamt. Yeah. Well, in the short program, they were having that kind of a skate. Had a little mistake, but uh, not today. Watch this twist. Look at the height. Right here. He pops her up, catches her over his head and places her down. They were right where they wanted to be in terms of focus throughout. One of my favorite elements of theirs, their side-by-side -side triple sal cows are at beautiful jumps. They did the side-by-side -side triple lutz in combination. Watch Eric here and the intensity on his face. There's no way he's putting her down. The concentration, the focus, and a job well done. All that is left is confirmation. And, and this was the team. They went out after it. Here it is. They knew it. 129, 19, and 190.11. One. And they just blew away their personal best. Canada's champions, Megan DeHamel, Eric Radford, Jessica Dubé, Sebastian Wolf, 1 2 Quebec, and Saskatchewan has a bronze medal, Lawrence and Swiggers. And the defending champions finish fourth. How good was that? What a moment! Magic in Moncton. Twenty years after Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler captured the pair's title here in the Maritimes, another Quebec team does it. Megan DeHamel and Eric Radford, Canadian pairs skating champions. Sarah, how does that sound to them? Rod and Tracy, I wish that you guys were able to have heard what they were like over that commercial break, because I can tell it certainly hasn't set in yet. Megan, you said this is why you two left home when you were 13 years old. I'm guessing it hasn't sunk in yet. We have lived our lives for this moment, for this moment, and we never lost hope that it was going to happen. All the partners we've had, all the sacrifices we've made, all the disappointments, we always had hope. We always did, and that's what got us here. 
the pressure. I know that you two were disappointed after the short program yesterday. The pressure, though, you're skating last. You've seen, we saw pressure get to some of the other pairs tonight. Uh, I mean, how difficult was it to stay in the moment? This was by far the most difficult competition of my <laughs> life so far. And, uh, but, you know, we've trained so hard and for so long and you, you, you never know for sure if you're going to do it, if it's going to happen. It doesn't matter how good you feel, you know, even the best fall down and it just, it's all just happening. It's incredible. It's so surreal. We're going to watch this video for like months and wonder how we did it. <laughs> well, congratulations, you two. Enjoy this. Thank Go you. find your parents. I know you want to. Rod, Tracy, back to you. Well, very interesting. Uh, their parents, uh, I know, shared the grief uh, back in 2010 when they didn't make it to the Olympics, and there were tears of despair at that time, tears of joy tonight. How did they do it? They it's training. They were it's good. training and it's never giving up. And I've known Eric over the years and there's been, he's had plenty of opportunities to give up and to quit. The two of them, they're fighters. It's the training that's gotten them here and fun to watch the kind of seasons that, that they've had, the kind of ride that they've had. And that will challenge easily in the top five in the world. They just got to keep going with it. Standing ovation for them tonight. Gold medals to come tonight for Duhamel and Radford, Canadian Pairs champions. The Stance to come. And a national Ladies and title. Gentlemen, we present your medal. Dethrones Cynthia Fanuf very close, one to two. Fanuf finishes second with a silver medal in third place. Caitlin Osmond, the 16 year old who has the bronze medal and she hails from Newfoundland. And she has not stopped smiling. No, she has not. <laughs> Nor has Amelie Lacoste, That's as you would imagine, point. who has spoken with Sarah Orleski. Emily, have you had a chance to catch your breath yet? Uh, a little bit, but I'm still like uh, on the moment. Uh, I feel so good. Uh, it's such a, a good feeling and I'm so proud of me. My performance wasn't perfect, but I achieved what I wanted to do and it's, it was winning national. And that was it. You came into this with that express goal. You wanted to walk out of here with a national title. What does it mean to you being national champion? Uh, it means that I achieved one goal. It's uh, one step closer to my ultimate uh, goal to be part of uh, um, the Olympic team. And uh, it feels so good and I can win for next year. You were sitting in first place with one skater left to go. Oh. How long was that long program for you? How nervous were you? Oh my God, it was so long. I couldn't, I didn't watch at all. I just put my um, head uh, my headphones and uh, I listen to my music and I undo my my skates I redo my skates and then I just focus on myself and I was like well um, um, I told my coaches when the note uh, the marks come in like just tell me because I cannot watch or I cannot hear anything right now <laughs> I was so nervous well we saw the emotion right afterwards congratulations on a national championship thank you so much <laughs> well it's been a golden night for Quebec Gold in lady skating, gold in pair skating. We have the free dance to come and also a conversation with the two Bryans, Williams and Orser. And welcome back to Moncton. Let's go back to 1985. Young man out of Penetanguishene, Ontario, Brian Orser winning one of his eight Canadian senior men's titles in this city. I will be very And the pride of Penetang or Penetanguishing joins me, Brian Orser. Good to see you, it's my always friend. Great. It's always great to see you, too. You are now a very successful coach at the Cricket Club in Toronto. You had Una Kim, the gold medalist in Vancouver. You're working with Cynthia Fanouf. She's in Montreal. She wins here seven years ago, wins last year, has trouble seventh, I think, at Skate Canada, mm -hmm. ninth in Japan. She comes to you. What was it she was looking for? Well, it was only six weeks ago that she that she came. She had decided to make the move from Toronto. I mean, from Montreal to come to Toronto, and it's a big change. It's a cultural change. Her, her training environment, her coaching, everything was changed. And so it was a very short time to make a difference. But she was ready to do that. She was ready to make the change. What kind of a difference? Because there's a quote here where you say, "I'll let her do her thing on the ice. I have to manage her life." I think it's just, as I find it as a coach, especially at that level, you have to oversee everybody. Everything, everyone who's involved, make sure that they're, they're happy and content and that they have a passion for skating. 
and um, the off ice of course, the on-ice, I mean, she can be in charge of that, and I can manage some of that too, but just really keeping the package and keeping the barriers and keeping the focus so that she can do her job and feel comfortable and do it well. In just a couple of seconds, she was second today to Lacoste. A lot of people here thought she won. Are you disappointed with that? <sighs> it is a step up from where she's been. You know, it's funny. It's kind of one of those catch-22 things because it was a step up from the season of this season. She, she came onto the ice for the free program tonight and she was a champion. She owned it, she filled the space, she was happy, she was relaxed, and she was comfortable, and she skated very well. And I thought it would be enough. Um, so the rest is out of my hands. And I have to, you know, you, you have to take your hat off to, to Emily Lacoste. I mean, her, one of her dreams came true tonight. All right, I'm rushing you because uh, we're running out of time. You people at home are in for a treat. Earlier today, and who better than a two-time silver medalist in the Olympics to talk about Patrick Chan? Let's roll that tape. This is one of the great short programs ever. You take us through it. First of all, I was backstage with Patrick when I was with Cynthia, and he was warming up and getting ready, and he was with his coach, Christy Kroll. Very relaxed. They were actually playing cards. Just relaxed and just um, just trying to be comfortable. And he took to the ice, and that's exactly what we see. He's comfortable. He's a skater, skater. He's got amazing edges. Quad toe, triple toe. I mean, I think of any little tiny flaw, it would have been on the quad toe. And, he, and I think Patrick would agree. He was a little tiny bit off balance. However, he pulled it off and it was great. Now the biggest improvement for Patrick this season is his triple axle. Great takeoff, little skid on the takeoff, which is good. And I think he'll um, be able to manage that triple axle from, from now on in. Another big improvement this year, the spins. Very innovative, all the positions, all the features. And when you have a great skater like Patrick and a great jumper, you have to really be careful that you don't kind of become complacent with some of the elements and the spins. Every single element, every single step, every mohawk and chachka, he was aware of and he was paying attention to. Solid triplets. Brian, I haven't seen him. He's always relaxed, but he seemed to be having a, a, a better time today. Yeah, there was something. There was something special and relaxed. And of course, he takes every competition very seriously. You know, he's heading into, hopefully, his uh, fifth Canadian title. I had my fifth Canadian title here in Moncton as well, actually. That was number five. Night, that was number five for me, yeah. So a little piece of trivia. I mean, look at the position on that camel spin. It was re it's really fantastic. You don't see many programs like this. Do you? You, no, you don't. And I, I, I know that he had a great score of over 100 points, and I think that's probably one of the highest ever. And deserving. And the cool thing about this program is, is engaging the audience. Of course, you have a panel of judges, and he's he's embracing them and engaging them in the per, in the performance. Well, the audience loved it. But you all back in the area, off, you know, behind the curtains, you were going nuts back there. People were cheering and yelling. Oh, you know what? He's he's a great friend of everybody. Everybody wants to see him do well. He's a world champion. So everybody kind of feels like they have a little piece of ownership. Listen, we have to get to the dance. Uh, that was earlier today, but as I said, uh, treat for you people at home. Who better than the two-time Olympic medalist, silver medalist, eight-time Canadian champion? Good to see you. Good luck with Cynthia Fanouf. Thank you, Brian. I will always remember your late mother as she paced the halls. Couldn't watch you in Calgary in the Battle of the Bryans. She paced these halls, too, in 1985. Brian Orser, now a successful coach in Toronto. We will take a break. When we come back, it's the dance-free. We'll rejoin Rod Black and Tracy Wilson. Brian, thank you.